Good morning. Welcome to our service today. Reading from Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse 4. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law a Pharisee, as to zeal a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in death, if somehow I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that what I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. You may not believe it, but many days I do a keep fit video. And to encourage you to keep up with what they're trying to get you to do, they intersperse the torture with some motivational sayings. Winners were once beginners. Keep going. You're already beating those who are still on the couch. Perhaps one of my favourite sayings for these days, the rule of six does not apply to Mars bars. Paul is offering some motivational speech to the church at Philippi. We're continuing our series on Philippians chapter 3 now. Philippi was, you remember, a Roman colony in modern-day Greece. The church at Philippi, founded by Paul and Timothy and Silas and possibly Luke, on Paul's second missionary journey. And Paul possibly visited there again. But now, from prison, Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, encouraging them to keep going, to press onwards towards the prize. Our passage in Philippians today began with Paul offering, as it were, his credentials, his CV, or at least those credentials he used to think were important. A member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. From Philippians 3, verses 5 and 6. From earlier verses, we can see that this is written in response to events that had happened at Philippi. Marcus Bockmuel writes, These verses are one of Paul's clearest and most blatant attacks on those who attempted, on the basis of Christianity's Jewish origin, to impose a full regime of Jewish law observance on Gentile converts. Christianity, in his book, The Epistle to the, Ephe to the Philippians. It's very similar to Paul's admonitions in 2 Corinthians. Here in Philippians chapter 3, in verse 2, watch out, he says, for those dogs, those evil workers, the mutilation. Incidentally, all those in Greek start with the letter K. Philippians 3, verse 2. So his writing likely uh, because of the response to the church at Philippi to some Jewish Christians who were wishing to keep their traditions and to persuade others in Philippi to follow their example, including Gentile converts. However, these Jewish credentials of Paul's are much more supreme than any of theirs. Yet instead of those exterior, ancestral, earned credentials, Paul now counts on his new relationship with Christ, and all other things he counts as rubbish. The Greek word also means done, counts them as nothing. Robin Mark wrote a song based on these verses in Philippians. 
all I once held dear, built my life upon, all this world reveres and wars to own, all I once thought gain I count but loss, spent and worthless now, compared to this, knowing you, Jesus. Paul at one time thought that handing God his credentials would be his entrance ticket into the kingdom. But now he knows that what is important is not that God knows what you have done or who you claim to be, but that you know what God has done and who Christ is. And in this, imitate me, Paul reminds them. He previously, if you remember, encouraged the Philippians to emulate Timothy and Epaphroditus. Here he's writing, imitate me. Don't look back, Paul encourages. David John Williams, in his book Paul Metaphor, writes, In Roman culture, the circus with its chariot races provided a popular form of entertainment. The first and greatest circus was, of course, the Circus Maximus in Rome. Philippians 3, 13-14, describes the charioteer, intent on the race, his eyes fixed on the front, not daring to look behind, lest the slightest pressure on the reins wrapped around his body, produced a false move and caused him to lose the race of possibly his life. Imitate me, says Apostle Paul, and we're back to the motivational speech, press on towards the goal, keep on keeping on, quitters don't win and winners don't quit, run the race. The word marathon comes from a historical Greek legend Around the year 490 BC, a Persian army landed <clears throat> on the plain of Marathon, threatening the city of Athens just 25 miles away. The Athenians prepared for the battle, and against all odds, the vastly outnumbered Athenian army defeated the Persians in battle. It was a, a victory. And after the battle, so the story goes, a runner named Pheidippides was dispatched to carry the good news of the victory to the terrified residents of Athens. He ran the whole 25 miles across the plain of Marathon, non-stop. And when he arrived back at the city of Athens, exhausted, dehydrated, he burst into the city and with his last breath shouted, Rejoice, we conquered. We have conquered in Christ. The victory for us is won in Christ and our salvation. And we keep pressing on towards the goal. We keep on running. Paul may have had the credentials of a faithful Pharisee, but on the road to Damascus he was found by Jesus. He was cared for by a Christian, Ananias, and Paul came to a new understanding of God's kingdom, the way in and the prize goal. Imitate me, he writes, keep on keeping on. Robin Mark's song continues, now my heart's desire is to know you more, to be found by you and known as yours, to possess by faith what I could not earn, all surpassing gift of righteousness. So where are we? Are we running away from Christ? Are we still waiting and hoping that Christ will find us? Are we still expecting our own credentials, based on our birthright or achievements, to be sufficient for the kingdom? Or are we hopefully living in Christ and pressing on towards the goal? And are we able to say to others, emulate me in the kingdom of God? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may we be faithful witness to the saving gospel of Christ. May we faithfully live our gospel calling and never look back, counting as nothing all our earthly pride, but looking only to you and desiring only to serve you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>